This patient of yours, Marsha, gets serafinib. Let's hypothetically say that she progresses, clearly progresses anatomically mm -hmm. uh, on, on serafinib. M Manisha, what do you go to next? Uh, so I ask the same question that many of panelists have, have alluded to, to say, you know, start from scratch. Do they have a role for local regional therapy? Uh, if it's progressed in the endobronchial area, do I need to involve my interventional pulmonologist, you know, to get a stent or a laser or whatnot? Uh, or do I need to do radiation to the bony metastasis that's symptomatic? So after I exhaust sort of local regional options, sometimes we mentioned that surgery can be done for progressive neck node. Uh, but if they really need systemic therapy, then I look at the clinical trial options, uh, and that would be the best bet if, if possible. So there are, you know, now it's easy to spot where the trials are with the clinicaltrials.gov website. Uh, we have several trials at our institution, but it's we customize the care. So if, if trial is available that's best suited for a patient at other center, we talk about it and see what, what patient wants to do. Uh, I am particularly excited about, you know, more potent ways of targeted TKI such as cabozantinib or lenvetinib, uh, as well as BRAF uh, and MAC inhibitors. And you mentioned before you might even test for BRAF mutation yes. in a patient like yes, this. Yes, definitely we would, uh, because it would it will basically look at all the options available. For yeah, so stepping back, you asked me what I would have done. Um, we actually would have offered the patient a clinical trial first if it were feasible and molecular profile the tumor exactly like Manisha and Marsha were saying. Because if there is a, a trial ab available, the way I explain it to the patient is that you never know um, what may be better than what you can always go back to an approved therapy. So looking at clinical trials first and profiling tumors. Frank, Marsha told us um, uh, she wanted this patient to have uh, some uh, enjoyment uh, of upcoming events before starting therapy. Um, <laughs> when, uh, when you eventually start therapy on patients like this, what do you tell them about the side effects and, and what do you tell them about management? Yeah, and that's a, a very important point. I mean, we talk about quality of life up front and um, with the serafinib trial, the decision trial, we actually have quality of life data and um, we kind of run through that with them. And um, you know, the first thing we tell them, obviously, is about the hand foot syndrome, as I talked to. I didn't allude to this earlier, but hypertension is another issue. And so that's another way to actually involve the endocrinologist, too, if you don't feel comfortable you know, managing the hypertension. Um, but we tell them those are side effects that um, can lead to, to problems. Um, the same thing with fatigue. And again, as I mentioned to earlier, it's the side effects usually come on within the first cycle. Um, and then with good management, and even sometimes dosage adjustments, the, the side effects actually um, drop off and then kind of plateau um, for the rest of the, the time they're on treatment. And um, I think telling that to a patient up front, um, they know what to expect. And when they come back subsequently, they feel better. They know that, you know, I can get through this. I'm actually doing well. I mean, several months down the road, it's like they're on the treatment and like, I, I feel okay. You know, they adjusted to the side effect profile and, and they're doing quite well. So and encouraging the patient to call the specialty programs that are available 24 hours a day. You know, there's um, oncologic nurses available all the time or call us if you're having any symptoms because patients sometimes tend to think I need to, you know, bear through this and the next thing that you know they want to quit the drug. So the management all along is very important, communication. Oh, uh, also, one other thing was just that, that you have to manage whether or not they're responding because you're not going to keep a patient on a drug when they're not responding. And so our routine, at least especially in the first eight months, is to do scans every two months. And so there's nothing more reassuring and encouraging to a patient who might be you know, getting a little tired of a side effect to show them a nice 20% response on their scan. And all of a sudden their hand foot syndrome clears up amazingly. Mm -hmm. So I think that that positive feedback actually is, is very, very important. And you know, I think that it, it, it is a, an unusual thing. I don't find this actually with many of the other TKIs um, that there really does seem to be a hump. And I think we had some data at ASCO about this, that it's really the peaks in the first four months. I've had almost no patient, I say to them, don't make a decision to quit before six months because many of the things that bother you, the fatigue, I have them come in many times four months into it. It's like a, it's like a cloud lifted. I don't know what happened. So it's just with serafinib, other TKIs, I don't find this the case, but with serafinib, I do find that I say to them, you know, bear with me for four to six months, and then if you really feel you can't stand it, and, I, and it's always been the case that they're like, no, I'm so glad I pushed through. So Ezra, I also think that, you know, preparing the patient as best as possible before you start therapy is very critical. So we know that we anticipate sort of drug holidays to get through the, the side effects or we anticipate dose reduction in some patients. And so 
explaining them that that might be possibility and that may not necessarily affect the, the benefit uh, is very important. Uh, also, making them aware of the serious but rare risks that are associated with this drug so that they're aware that this is not a piece of cake, this is not a pill of Tylenol, that that's just simple and they're gonna take it and it's no big deal. So, you know, many thyroid cancer patients are not necessarily used to committing to frequent visits and they are in general feeling great. They don't have time to go to the doctor. So really have upfront conversation. This is a big deal. The only simple thing about these drugs is that it's given orally that the key is in your hand, but we really need to work together. And that frequent phone calls. And so it's really a team management. So we have a couple of nurses, nurse practitioner, myself, and endocrinologist surgeon. So it's really uh, taking care of them as a team is very, very important. These are all great points. Clearly these patients exist. Uh, clearly there are effective therapies for these patients. We need to, um, as we grow in this field, uh, we're learning when to start therapy, what, who the ideal patient is to start therapy on, what therapies uh, to start and sequence, and how to manage uh, adverse events. This is a great discussion. Thank you.